Morena koutou, Atamaria ki a koutou. It's wonderful to welcome you for worship this morning on the 3rd of April, the end of what's probably felt like a very long week. And so I want to encourage you um, to start this day by committing ourselves afresh to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to um, begin in prayer. Ki inoi tātou. E te atua kāraua, e tuwhera ana ngā ngākau katoa ke a koe, e mohi o te ana ngā hiahia katoa, e kore hoki i ngarau i a koe te mihona. Whakahangia i hoto wairua tapu hei whakamā i ngā whakaro o mātou ngākau. Kia tino araha e mātou ki a koe, kia tika ai te whakanui i tō ingoa tapu. Ko ihu karai te hoki, tō mātou ariki. Āmenia. This morning uh, we've got another hymn from David Tarpany and Hatia. Well, David Tarpany by himself at the moment in lockdown. And this is uh, hymn number 37, a, uh, a Lent hymn recalling uh, Jesus' time in the wilderness. kneel or sit and in silence remember our need for God's forgiveness. Let us confess our sins to God together. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart, we have not loved others as our Saviour Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Almighty God, who pardons all who truly repent, forgive your sins, strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Redeemer. Amen. The psalm assigned for today is Psalm 22, um, which many of you will know or recognise from the Gospels. And so um, even though it's a long psalm, I'd love to go through the whole psalm with you. Let's read the psalm together as it's set out in the prayer book. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from my help and from my cry of distress. O oh my God, I cry out in the daytime, but you do not answer. At night also, but I get no relief. But you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of your people. Our ancestors trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They called to you and were rescued. They put their trust in you and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and something less than human. An object of scorn and an outcast of the people. All those who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and toss their heads saying, You trusted in God for deliverance. 
If God cares for you, let God rescue you. But you are the one who took me out of the womb. You kept me safe upon my mother's breast. On you have I been cast ever since I was born. And you are my God even from my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is close at hand. And there is no one to help me. Many bulls have come around me. Great bulls of Bashan close in on me from every side. They open wide their mouths at me. Like ravening and roaring lions, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast has melted like wax. My mouth is parched as dry clay, my tongue clings to my jaws. And I am laid in the dust of death. Many dogs have come around me, and the wicked hem me in on every side. They pierce my hands and feet, I can count all my bones. They stand staring and gloating over me, they shear out my garments among them, and they cast lots for my clothing. Do not stand far off from me, O Lord. You are my helper, come quickly to my rescue. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the mauling of dogs. Save me from the lion's mouth, my afflicted soul from the horns of the wild cattle. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly I will praise you. Give praise all you that fear the Lord. Proclaim God's greatness, all you children of Jacob. For you, O God, have not despised or abhorred the poor in their affliction. You have not hidden your face from them, but you heard them when they called to you. You are the theme of my praise in the full assembly. My vows I will perform in the sight of those who fear you. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek you, O Lord, shall praise you. May they be in good heart forever. Let all the ends of the earth remember and turn to you, O Lord. And let all the families of the nations bow down before you. For yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are the ruler of, over the nations. As for those who sleep in the grave, how shall they worship you? All those who go down into the dust, how shall they bow before you? But I shall live through you, and my children shall serve you. They shall tell of you to the generations that are yet to come. To a people as yet unborn, they shall make known the saving deeds you have done. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Well, this morning um, I wanted to um, share with you from the psalm, partly because it struck me as being very evocative of the situations that people might be facing at the moment. Um, that perhaps as time has worn on, you have felt forsaken, that felt the loneliness from others, but also perhaps a sense of loneliness from God himself. I was particularly struck by the news that I saw um, when I got up this morning that a 13-year-old in the UK, um, a boy called Ismail Abdul Wahab, um, had died from coronavirus. And Terribly sadly, he had died um, alone. His parents weren't allowed to be with him. Um, thankfully, he was unconscious at the time, but it still struck me as a marker of the grief that's being experienced, that this child um, was not able to have his parents with him as he passed away. Now, of course, there is a sense in which everyone dies alone. It's something people do um, by themselves in one sense, and yet... Having human companionship as people pass away is something that people hope for. It's something that we hope we can offer to people as well. And yet that's been stripped away from us too. The sense of being forsaken by other people is one that's highly visible at the moment. And in this psalm, in Psalm 22, the psalmist expresses their own sense as they're in danger of death, that they have been forsaken not only by people, but by God himself. And this it's a whole psalm is a, is a cry out to God. Actually, what's really striking in this psalm and 
in throughout all the psalms is that the psalmist feels unashamed about going to God. So in other words, the response of faith from the psalmist seems to be not so much to question why this is happening and ask God for an explanation, or even to turn away from God altogether and to think God can't be involved in this. Instead, the, the response of faith is to, is to approach God and say, Lord, actually, I feel like this is your fault. That's the, um, the faithful response of a psalmist, is to turn to God and say, Lord, I recognize your place in the world. Even in the midst of this, this evil that I cannot explain, I still go to you as the one who, who holds these things in his hands. So the psalmist reaches out to God. This is a cry of faith, even though it's almost a, 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 an ascription of blame to God. He's blaming him for this situation, the sense of abandonment. And as the psalm goes on, there's um, a change in the way that he's, he's responding. He's uh, praying and eventually actually praising God. So in other words, this is, this is a psalm that's written as a reflection, looking back. Not something from in the midst of these circumstances. The psalmist is able to describe the path that they followed on the way through from feeling forsaken to finding comfort in God and then praising him and telling others. I want to say this morning that you at the moment might not be able to go through all those steps. And in fact, that's not the intent of the psalm is to say that you must make this emotional transition all the way through to praise. There are other psalms, Psalm 88, for example, which don't go through that whole journey. But commentators um, suggest that this is actually a liturgical psalm. In other words, it's an act of worship to recognize that there are these times when we experience abandonment, the sense of abandonment from God, and are then able to share together with at least the psalmist's experience of progressing through into prayer, out of complaint, and then from there into praise. Not to say that we have to feel the same way, but to recognize that this is one faithful response to that sense of abandonment from God. In other words, we don't do this simply to express our own feelings as we read it together, as we find a, a sung version of it. We don't do this just to express ourselves, but in order, order to express solidarity with the psalmist and with other Christians who are in a different place. And we do it in order to form ourselves so that we discover a pattern of how to respond to a sense of abandonment and, and discouragement, uh, to form in ourselves a response of turning to prayer and in due course of being able to turn to praise. Now, as Christians reading this psalm, we, we find not merely a pattern to follow, but we find that this psalm points us towards a person. In fact, the gospel writers have, were at pains to tell the story of Jesus' passion in words that echoed this psalm, so that we could see the precise way that the psalm and Jesus' own experience match up with each other. Here's the description of the scoffing in verses 7 and 8, the division of garments, um, later on in the psalm, the idea of all the bones being out of joint um, and the whole experience of the suffering of the psalmist finds new meaning as we observe the sufferings of Jesus Christ on the cross. And because of that, this psalm has become very dear to Christian readers as um, a way of understanding Jesus' own experience of suffering in his own humanity that where we feel that sense of abandonment from God, we find that God himself in Christ has experienced and expressed in these same words the experience of abandonment. And so we find a sense of solidarity there, a sense that even if we are feeling distant from God, we find in the narrative of Jesus' own suffering a retelling, I guess, of the story of the psalm that means that we know that God himself in Christ is able to sympathize with us, to, to share in some way in the same feeling that we have. And we also find in the psalm a sort of turning on its head of the answered prayer. 
Um, in verse 22, the psalmist is able to say that they've found life out of this, that God has brought them to a place of life. And yet Jesus' experience was that rather than being rescued from it, even though he said, Lord, if, if this cup can pass from me, Father, if this cup could pass from me, let it be so. Actually, Jesus found not the rescue that the psalmist tells off, but experienced death. And he did this so that we, in our circumstances, in our own abandonments of whatever sort they are, find that we have the hope of life because Jesus experienced this for us. In other words, the death of Jesus, even though it doesn't quite fit the narrative of the psalm, is the very thing which for Christian readers of the psalm gives us hope that we will find, despite our feeling of abandonment by God, that we have in fact encountered God's rescue. And it's in the cross we see that, that exchange, that interchange of death for life, of, of Jesus' death for our life, um, of the end, of, in some sense, um, of his um, retelling of the story of this psalm, so that we come to a different ending, an ending of hope. And I wonder if you notice that at the end there, there's this um, idea of being able to tell out the story. Nathan, um, yesterday, helped us to see this from another psalm, that, that we're called into this place of telling others of the hope that we've found. Now, if this, um, again, I want to emphasize that I'm not asking you to feel the ending of the psalm necessarily today. But I do want you to understand that there's a form here, there's a pattern here that we are to learn in the liturgical setting of the psalm amongst the community of God's people speaking these words out together, that, that we find a call in it to say, as I've encountered Christ, as I've encountered his suffering on the cross, and as I've experienced um, the sense of, of closeness to his own sufferings, that I'm then able to go and tell others about these wonderful things that I've encountered in God. In other words, the psalm forms us not only to pray, not only to speak our complaint out to God, not only to praise him, but to do those things which mean that others tell the same story, not just of the psalm, but of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as we did yesterday, um, I wonder if we can join together in saying the Te Deum from the Rawiri. Um, this, this expression of praise to God, but also of prayer for him to save us. So let's do this together. He whakapai atu ana mātou ki a koe e te atua. He whakaai ana mātou ko koe anō a i hoa. He koropiko ana te whenua katoa ki a koe, i te matua ora tonu. He kaha ana te karanga a ngā anahera katoa ki a koe, a ngā rangi me o reira kaha katoa. Hono tono te karanga a ngā kirupima, a ngā herapima ki a koe. Tapu. Tapu, tapu rawa, e hoa e te ato o ngā manu tua uri uri, whai oi. Ki, ki tonu te rangi te meta whenua, i te nui o tō kororia, i whakapai ana ki a koe ngā apotoro, te hunga ingoa nui, i whakapai ana ki a koe te hui hui ngā pai o ngā porepiti, i whakapai ana ki a koe te ope ingoa nui, ngā tāngata i patua mō te whakapono. E whakaai ana ki a koe, te hahi tapu putanoa i te ao. Ki te matua, e here rawa nei te kororia, ki tau tama kotahi, he ponoia, he ingoa nui. Ki te wairua tapu ano hoki, ki te kai whakamarie, ko koe te kingi ingoa nui i te karaiti, ko koe te tama ora tonu a te matua. I a koe i anga ki te whakaora i te tangata, Ki hai koe ki i kino ki a whānau i te wahina. Ano ka taia e koe te wero o te mate. Ka tuwhera i a koe te rangatiratanga o te rangi, ki te hunga whakapono katoa. Kei te ringa matau o te atua koe e noho ana, kei te kororia o te matua. I whakapono ana mātou, tērā koe e haere mai. Hei kai whakari te whakawā mō mātou. Ko e mātou ka inoi nei ki a koe ki whakakahangia au pononga, 
i hoko e koe ki o toto utu nui, whaka uru a rātou ki roto ki o tāngata tapu, ki te korori a mutinga kore, e hoa whaka o rangi tāu hunga, whaka paenga tāu hahi, ka wana te rātou, whaka arahia a ake ake ake. I tēnei rā, i tēnei rā, e whakanui ana mātou i a koe, e karakia ana mātou ki tō ingoa, ai anei a ake ake ake. Whaka ai mai e hoa, ki a tia ki ana mātou ai anei kei hara. I hoa, tō hungi a mātou, tō hungi a mātou. I hoa, ki a tau tō atawhai ki runga ki a mātou. E whakawhirina ki atu nei hoki mātou ki a koe. E hoa, e whakawhirina ki atu ana ahau ki a koe. Aua ahau e tukua ki a whakamaa. Āmeni. Ki ingoi tātou. Father, we lift up to you today those who in their loneliness feel they have been abandoned by you. Give them the comfort, we pray of finding solidarity in the sufferings of Jesus. Give them, by your Spirit, a sense of your presence that relieves their loneliness and brings them close to you. We lift up to you, especially those um, who are having to spend this time on their own. Father, I pray that you would give them a genuine experience of your presence, your closeness and your care and love for them. We ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Kua kona nei tātou i tō tātou ariki, ka waia tata.
we say together the grace. Kia tau, kia tato katoa, te atawhai o te tato ariki o i hikaraiti. Me te aroha o te atua, me te whiwhi ngā tahi tanga ki te wairua tapu. Ake, ake, ake. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Kia ora koutou.